The very first thing that I do is lifting the pelvic floor up and pulling the belly bottom back so I can expand my rib cage without collapsing everything on the lower back. Then by pressing my shin bones and front ankles to the floor, I lift my chest up. This is the first phase. So this makes me engage also the quads, which are actually increasing the extension or um, the lengthening of the psoas muscle. Once this is happening and is strong, stable enough, I go into the posture. I still don't have enough strength to stay on the posture for five full, bre full breaths. So I come back as soon as I feel that I am losing the strength. So I learn to not collapse the weight on the floor every time I try to stay longer. So this is another way to uh, practice this posture, not the traditional way, but still this uh, makes us work with the thighs, which is supposed to be the main part of the body, um, keeping the weight of the body up, avoiding it to collapse to the floor. And this uh, final version of Laguvajrasana is a little bit more challenging in terms of flexibility, so it requires even more expansion of the rib cage, so the backbend can happen on the upper torso. There is even more extension of the hip flexors, the psoas is being extended, and the thighs are also working a lot to avoid the weight of the body collapsing towards the back on the head.